Anthony, the internet politician here, and there are nearly 16 million Jews in the world. I believe that most have no desire to live in the Middle East and that Zionism as a concept is flawed, allowing for the repeat of mistakes of the past because of the Holocaust is really no excuse. Uh, it has only served to create a situation in the Middle East that for approximately 75 years has only made tensions worse. As of 2023, Jews represent less than one fifth of a percent of the world population. 7.2 million Jews live in Israel. 5.7 million Jews live in the United States. The rest, of course, spread out among the world. Now you go, well, why are you bringing this up? Well, having a conversation with a guy uh, when I was grocery shopping a few weeks ago, uh, it somehow led into my views on Palestine and Israel. And I am pro-Palestine, which equals anti-Zionism. I am not for the thought process behind Zionism was, hey, uh, the Jews are badly discriminated against in Europe and that the, we should uh, find a homeland, preferably the biblical uh, Israel uh, near Jerusalem, because, you know, that's the capital. Uh, and we establish ourselves there so that Jews may never feel discriminated against again or something like that. Um, by the time the early 1900s happen, Jews already live in Israel. And there's Muslim population and there's also a Christian population. Historically, Jerusalem has been a major world religious site. Yes, during the early 1900s, late 1800s, etc., as there is anywhere, there are you know typical skirmishes that happen between people's ideologies. That that's a thing. But uh, what really pushed the creation of Israel as a concept uh, by the League of Nations, of course, the Holocaust. But also at this point in time, uh, Jews uh, as a people had become wealthy, and they had money to number of politicians to push they're basically lobbyists to push the Israel idea and then uh, at some point in there um, some worshippers of a certain Christianity uh, belief I don't know but basically the concept of if all Jews move to Israel then there would be a rapture which brings up an interesting fact. Uh, back when I was in college, uh, 2004 or 5, 6, somewhere around there, uh, a group had set up shop in the campus um, community area. And uh, I was not unknown that I was Jewish. And they had offered to give me a place to live and work if I moved to Israel. I did not understand why. I had a later conversation with my own mother to explain it to me because this thing is not learned in Hebrew school, something I did until I was 12 years old. But as a Jew, uh, when I had the snip and clip or the, the little, t little taken off the top, uh, you know what I mean, I was given a Hebrew name, which is uh, based off of both of my grandfathers. I know that if I ever were to go to Israel, I would be almost certainly given citizenship. That's just, I, I just have to go to the synagogue and uh, push the paperwork, I guess. I don't, I don't know the exact terms. Again, I was 12 years old when this conversation about the citizenship thing was brought up to me. Anyway, the inherent flaw of the concept of an Israel or a Jewish state was that we ignored lessons from the past. The League of Nations, which, of course, the United States and the United Kingdom were a part of, um, just ignored history of Canada, of the United States, of Mexico, as Central America. They ignored all the plight, all the wars that were caused by forcing people to move out of their native lands. And in the case of the United States and Canada into reservations, we literally have an American Indian war here. So like, why would we want to repeat this thing? And Sure, in Canada and the United States, the natives here are not warring anymore. They've pretty much been decimated. For some reason, it was thought to be okay to do that in the Middle East. And Muslims, as a population, are vast. They're one of the world's largest religions. And 
somebody must have thought that this would be problematic. And I'm sure somebody said to them, oh, no, no, no. They'll just roll over and let us take the land. That has not been the case. And the fact that they thought nothing of the history of the world. That's why I'm pro-Palestine. You shouldn't... Like, if somebody came to your house and said, hey, I need you to move into this hovel down the street. I'm taking this for myself. You wouldn't want that. And surely the Palestinian people did not lie down and let that happen. When the people who lived in Israel, or sorry, Palestine, before it was Israel, you know, uh, they bought property. They moved in, of course. Uh, so it made a transition from a Muslim household to a, a Jewish household or a Christian household. But it was done, it was being done civilly. So why not just let nature take its course? Eventually, maybe now, in that alternate timeline, Israel, or actually, I, I still believe it would be named Palestine if we let nature take its course, would probably be an established state beyond just the recognized borders, uh, and they would have their own government, and it would be way different than what we have now. Would it be a representative government of Jews, Christians, and Muslims? I don't know. If you look at the chart here, you will see that there was increasing Jewish population because they were fleeing Europe. You know, they were buying homes and buying land and moving in. Maybe they could arrange something with local governments. I don't know the actual setup of Palestine back then. I Honestly, when you look at maps, it really isn't very descriptive. I mean, there's some villages, cities, whatever, it had names visually can't tell if there was any real organization beyond people calling their villages whatever was there considered a Palestinian state government at the time because obviously when the Ottomans fell and the land was split up from Transjordan and I believe it was just Transjordan because I think that this the whole Ottoman Empire was just cut up because uh, we ended up with uh, Iran Iraq uh, Jordan uh, Kuwait etc uh, and, and then of course uh, Palestine. How organized was it? I don't know. And you feel free to put it in the comments. Did anybody go to these communities and go, hey, how would you feel if we sent a whole bunch of people to you uh, because they need a place to live? Would, would those people, if had been asked, be okay with it? I can't imagine a lot of people saying no. I don't know if any of that was done because just like with the natives here in North America, they just said, hey, we're taking your land, we're calling it another thing, and uh, you can go live in these little camps here and there on, on the corners, whatever. And here we are, 75 years later, and still fighting. And this time it's with a, 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 an Israeli government that is so brutal that they are preventing aid to innocent Palestinians. And then the Palestinians are being forcefully represented by a group that is just as dickish as the Israeli government. And I don't understand why this is okay. Why are we allowing this? I mean, we've interfered already. Why, why aren't we interfering more? Why aren't we just stopping it? Why are... And I get it. Sovereignty. We, we don't want to put ourselves in the way. And that's why the United States, obviously to avoid World War III, isn't just interfering with the Ukrainian war because you know it, you know you do that and you match it and then Russia responds but the U United Nations formerly the League of Nations created this situation and I feel like they're doing a whole lot of hands off for something they caused it's I don't know it, it seems like it's just a bad position so yes I'm pro Palestine and I am thus anti Zionist tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video did you like what you saw and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.